love changes everything Hands and faces Earth and sky Love Love changes everything How you live And how you die Love Can make a summer fly Or a night Seem like a lifetime Yes, love Love changes everything How I tremble At your name Nothing in the world Will ever be the same Love Love changes everything Love changes everything. Love can turn your world around, and that world will last forever. Yes, love. Love changes everything. Brings you glory. Brings you shame. Nothing.
Good. Well, that was a, a very nice uh, slide presentation you saw, and I'm not sure I have too much more to, to add uh, to that, but I just looked through my own files for some pictures which I'm happy to uh, add to the collection. Um, this is from the uh, Irvine meeting in 2009, uh, which you saw some other pictures of, and I thought that it was particularly uh, nice here uh, in relation to Dr. DeFazio, who I guess you saw him as a younger man in one of the 
pictures, but here he is now. He is, he is continuing to be extremely active in the field and is uh, working hard, particularly in Project 4. Alfredo Berardelli is uh, one of his colleagues as well who works in Rome. He's been working on buffer spasm his entire career, and those two people work, work a lot together. And you know a lot of other uh, people in this particular picture. I guess Mitchell Brin hasn't been mentioned, but he's, uh, he's been someone who's been an important person in the field over the years. Um, and um, here's a picture from, again, I guess it's 2009, um, Mary Lou, and uh, who she refers to as her uh, two second brothers. And uh, I, I thought I would go before them because they have a lot longer history than I do uh, in this. And so we'll let them uh, finish up with a lot more memories. Uh, so those are the two brothers. Um, and then I hope maybe I can be called the third brother. <laughs> I'm not the, the second brothers, but here's another, another event. This is from 20, 2012. And... Um, uh, here we are in 2016 at the Dystonia Coalition, and uh, uh, Mary Lou was supposed to have been there uh, to receive her plaque for her lifetime dedication to the field, and uh, she was unable because of health reasons. Um, she and I actually both came down with shingles of the right side of the face at the same time, uh, but uh, hers was more than me. Um, so she was unable to, to come at that particular time, but here we are holding the plaque for her uh, that she eventually received. And this next picture is the way that Dr. Jankovic refers to think about it uh, <laughs> in terms of the way that we were uh, handing, her the, handing her the plaque. Um, so uh, those, are the, those are the pictures I'd like to donate. In any event, um, uh, Joe uh, was the chair of the Medical Advisory Board and invited me to join in uh, 1989 is when I, when I joined the Medical Advisory Board. And um, uh, Mary Lou became the president in 1992. And then she asked me to be the chair of the Medical Advisory Board in 1993. So uh, I uh, shortly came on the medical, I uh, was only a short time on, and then she had me join, and uh, then I became the chair. And very often, and she has really guided uh, all the activities of the BEBRF, including the Medical Advisory Board over that time. We have had a great pleasure in going through uh, all the different grants uh, over the years, uh, the BEBRF has been the prime supporter of research in the field, getting people started, and I think it has been uh, terrific, and I've uh, really enjoyed the, the work, and um, Mary Lou has really guided all these activities. In the very beginning, her, her mom was still there, Maddie Lou, uh, and I... Uh, we, we also organized a number of brainstorming sessions. You really heard about uh, those uh, also. And I remember Maddie Lou coming to the first one. She was having a little bit of trouble walking, and that first one was in the winter, and we had to guide her over some ice. But I still remember her uh, being able to uh, come to all the different activities that we had at that time. So... Um, uh, Mary Lou and I have uh, frequently corresponded uh, by telephone or by email, um, perhaps uh, several times a month about different uh, issues. She's uh, been very alert to everything that goes on in the particular society and has guided it well. She's a very firm leader. I have occasionally tried to quit and have not been allowed <laughs> to do that, uh, but I have to follow orders. I have to do everything that she says, and I've, uh, and I've been actually pleased to be able to do that uh, over the time. Um, it has been fun to watch the evolution of the organization uh, during, that, uh, during that period. I uh, noted um, a, a couple of years ago that I thought that the Medical Advisory Board was aging, and I thought we needed some uh, new blood, and I'm very pleased that Brian has joined. 
<clears throat> and I think that that will uh, be a nice evolution in the long run. Uh, we need some more younger folks as, as well to uh, join the Medical Advisory Board so we can keep the organization going strong. So um, as you uh, heard, we are giving this particular plaque to Mary Lou. I, I think the organization has uh, really profited enormously from her help. And uh, I, I think that this plaque was just a small part of it. Um, uh, she has guided the organization through most of its uh, career, most of its time. And uh, I think that she will uh, continue to give good advice and we, uh, we hope that uh, she will be doing that. So thank you, Mary Lou, for all of the great things that you have done. All right. So um, it's, it's a pleasure for me to uh, uh, reminisce a little bit with you. I'm not going to take, take long time. We reminisced uh, last night um, uh, with Mary Lou. Uh, I had the honor to sit next to her. Um, and, uh, uh, but... Um, uh, since I joined Baylor in 1977, uh, I've seen over 40,000 patients. We have a database on all of my patients. And I must say, none of my 40,000 patients had as much impact on me as Mary Lou. Um, I uh, first met her in 1979 uh, when she was referred to me by Dr. Lewis, uh, who's an ophthalmologist, uh, because he correctly recognized that uh, she does not have an ophthalmological problem, but has a neurological problem, namely blepharospasm. And uh, that was my first encounter with this remarkable woman. Uh, uh, she uh, obviously, at that time, uh, wanted to learn more about blepharospasm and uh, wanted to do as much as she could to help other patients with blepharospasm. Uh, and uh, so we started to brainstorm, you know, what would be the best way to help not only her, but other patients with blepharospasm. And that was uh, the beginning of the Blepharospasm uh, Research Foundation. At that time, that was the title that I suggested, Blepharospasm Research Foundation, but for various reasons, uh, she insisted that we call it Benign Essential Blepharospasm Research Foundation. Um, and, uh, but uh, despite that long name, uh, the uh, foundation became a, a highly recognized uh, entity, um, particularly after the publication uh, by um, uh, uh, Jerry Bishop in the Wall Street Journal that you heard about before. So, um, uh, the, uh, Mary Lou obviously uh, has had a tremendous impact on, on me, and uh, we became extremely close friends uh, and had almost mother uh, son relationship, and in fact, she uh, started to call me uh, her s second son. Um, I was uh, uh, honored to um, uh, say a few words uh, uh, during the memorial uh, following her funeral, and this is what I said. I will always hold on to the memory of this most remarkable woman and be eternally grateful to her for the legacy she left behind, especially her daughter, Mary Lou, and the army of loyal followers, namely you. Um, so uh, it was a very moving experience uh, for me because uh, during that uh, memorial, uh, many, many important people uh, paid tribute uh, to her. She won many, many awards, many more awards that you can even imagine. Some of the most prestigious awards, including the Jefferson Award, which some of you may know about, um, th that uh, is given to people who have had uh, tremendous impact on uh, lives of other individuals. So this is MLK and her second son, um, and uh, I ha always cherish this title of being her second son. Th that made me the brother of Mary Lou, um, and, uh, 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 and uh, Mary Lou and I, uh, again, continued uh, the relationship. Uh, uh, occasionally, we even shared uh, desserts. Now, many of you who, who know me, uh, I'm a chocolate addict, a chocophilic. Uh, so I rarely ever shared my chocolate, uh, and uh, those people who I shared the chocolate with are very, very unique, very special, and certainly Mary Lou is one of the most special people that I occasionally share chocolate with. Um, um, so uh, we've had many, many good times over the years, um, sometimes uh, some challenging times, but uh, this is the uh, 
pictured uh, that uh, uh, I, I found recently the, from the first Blefort Spasm meeting, which was held in Houston in 82, uh, together with Dr. Wilkins, uh, Dr. Anderson, and I cannot remember the name of the ophthalmologist who was there. Maybe uh, Rick uh, can remember the, that. But we were the speakers of that first uh, meeting uh, that uh, Maddie Lou basically chaired. You've seen some of the other pictures, so I'm not going to go through those in any detail. Many of them are from other meetings. Uh, we used to have uh, the Blood Force meeting every year, and then I think about 10 years ago or so, it was changed to like every other year. So this is from the 20th Blood Force Spasm meeting in Houston. Uh, this is 27th uh, meeting that was in Irvine, which I think was one of the the best meetings uh, in terms of attendance and uh, participation of many uh, faculty, including foreigners uh, that uh, Dr. Heller pointed out already before. And uh, we had many good times over dinner. Um, uh, my wife, Kathy, who sits next to me, uh, along with uh, Mary Lou, um, has been a frequent participant at these uh, dinner meetings. You already saw this picture. And um, uh, I just wanted to... Uh, Take, use this uh, slide to uh, take the opportunity to thank Mark Hallett. Dr. Hallett uh, uh, became the um, uh, uh, chairman of the Medical Advisory Board after me, and I'm always uh, grateful to him, uh, not only for the leadership that he has shown as a chairman of the Medical Advisory Board, uh, but for the uh, close friendship that we have shared uh, over the years, including um, uh, as co for co-faculty during the Aspen course. So uh, the, one of the reasons why the four neurologists are here today is because we just finished uh, a course in Aspen, Colorado. This was our 26th course, uh, annual course for neurologists uh, on movement disorders, including uh, blood force spasm. Uh, so it worked out really well that uh, the four of us could uh, just fly down to Denver from Aspen and participate in this meeting. So again, I'm very grateful to Mark, uh, not only for his leadership, uh, uh, but I hope for his friendship. Uh, another uh, important contribution that Dr. Hallett has made is that he has been able to convince uh, the Blefos Patterson Research Foundation uh, and the leadership of uh, the foundation to finally start using the word, the D word. Now, the, now the D word is, is uh, something that uh, um, was really, in my opinion, the only time Maddie Lou and I disagreed um, because um, I kept telling her blepharospasm spasm is part of dystonia and we should uh, link the two blepharospasm spasm and dystonia. Uh, but she would say, no, don't, don't ever say the D word again in front of me. Um, uh, and uh, uh, and then she, she had some valid arguments because people with blepharospasm spasm clearly have different kind of problems and patients with other forms of, uh, of dystonia. Uh, nevertheless, finally, uh, toward the end, she became convinced that Blepharospasm is a form of dystonia, although she would like to, I think, think of dystonia as being a subset of blepharospasm. Um, but uh, she was, uh, she was uh, really terrific. Uh, so I always uh, refer to Maddie Lou as sort of a hybrid uh, between John Patton and uh, Mother Teresa. Uh, <laughs> she was so somewhere in between. Um, and you never know which Maddie Lou you're going to get, but... Uh, uh, but whatever Mary Lou said, uh, I, I followed. And the same is true for, for Mary Lou. Um, Mary Lou inherited uh, many of her, uh, of Mary Lou's uh, characteristics, uh, not only the great deal of empathy for other people, that, that is clearly one of the Mary Lou's major virtues, uh, but the leadership qualities. And uh, even though she says when she uses a hand like this that, no one pays attention to her. That's not true. Uh, we all respect her and regard her with a great deal of uh, love and, and respect. So last night we had a dinner uh, during which time um, uh, we reminisced. Uh, Mary Lou, I think, reminisced more than, than anyone else um, uh, but uh, because she has a longer history. But um, uh, she, um, in that uh, announcement, um, she uh, said uh, she had this R-E-D after her name. I said, what the hell is R-E-D? Uh, you know, and she said, well, that's a mystery. It's for you to figure out. And uh, Dr. Anderson and I uh, sort of brainstormed and uh, uh, finally uh, she, we decided it was, uh, red means retired, extremely dangerous. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, but that's from the movie you read. Uh, um, but uh, I think that's wrong. I think what red means revered, extraordinary de deity. And that's what Mary Lou is to us. So Mary Lou, thank you very much for everything you have done and we appreciate it. And that's great. And let's, um, now we'd like to hear from Dr. Anderson who uh, was there at the first BEBRF meeting and it's been uh, part of the organization for a long time. Well, every, everybody knows how I feel about Maddie Lou and I always said, and I love my mother to death, and women always control my life. I don't like guys trying to control me. So, uh, uh, Maddie Lou, my mother, my wife are probably the only people I was afraid of until Mary Lou took over. <laughs> and, uh, and they're women I'm afraid of. And uh, she's tried to control me. I was called the black sheep of the family, and she's given me a whole list of things I can't say and couldn't show. And since all my slides were X-rated of our pictures of my sister, which I guess would be considered incest, some of the pictures that I showed them, I better not show any of those. But, but uh, everybody knows this organization wouldn't be here without these two ladies. And uh, they gave of their time, of their money, of their health to this organization. Um, everybody, including me, is a lot better for the fact that they lived. Uh, it's been a good symbiotic relationship with all the doctors. They've helped us more than we've helped them, I think, across the board. And I just want to be sure, even though she said I can't say this, that she gets the recognition that she deserves for what she's done for this organization. And uh, certainly she has the genes of her mother. And in some ways, uh, I mean, where she didn't have the disease that the rest of us either treat or have in this room, and she gave of her life or money and her health for all of you and to support her mother, I think she certainly deserves the recognition um, as much as her mother and this organization wouldn't be here without her had she not carried on the torch. And she's created the foundation and the group to carry this to even a higher level before she quit or retires. And I don't think she'll re totally retire. Her mother we had to have a retirement for her at, at uh, Iowa, and then she didn't retire. She brought a tornado to Iowa that nearly took out my took out part of my horse ranch. So I was afraid to invite her back to Iowa, and we called her the White Tornado after that. But uh, this has been a labor of love with these two ladies and with this organization, and I really appreciate what they've done for all of you and for me. 